What's up, you too? I'm just thankful to. Uh, I'm thankful to God. He's, uh, you know, the the uh, things He's told me, the things He's done in my life. I'm thankful <clears throat> that I understand uh, a little bit about Him. You know, I'm glad I know that God was manifested in a flesh. I know I'm glad that uh, Prophet Isaiah give me understanding that the Father became the Son. I'm, I'm glad I understand these things. Um, I, I'm, I'm glad. He, you know, He calls us on us to do uh, sacrifice at times. I don't normally uh, post when I'm fasting, but uh, it's been about a day and a half, I think. Um, the Lord told me uh, 22 days now, so you're gonna see uh, Ronnie thin out because uh, when I do long fast 20, 30, 40 pounds one time, my first uh, lengthy fast back in 2010, 40 pounds. I started at 210, I finished at 170. <laughs> I, was, I was so happy that day, I went to uh. The Meyer store, and I bought, uh, I think I bought a pair of jeans, uh, 34 waist. I mean, I wore them one time, and I I wasn't dieting at all, and I gained that weight. You know, I wasn't doing it for weight loss. I was doing it because God told me to do it. And I tried these fasts in, in, in the past on my own. I don't usually get very far, but when he calls you, when he called me, and I'd been like, who, me? No. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time since I did a lengthy one. and um, But he's said fast. You know, I have liquids. Um, I absolutely no food. That's what a fast means. I'm sorry. It doesn't mean eat vegetables. <laughs> that's more of a cleansing fast. You know, that's not even really fasting. If you're eating, you're technically you're not fasting. And... Uh, and I, the video wasn't going to be on that, but I thank God that, um, you know, the things that he's shown me. I'm able to write books. He's given me time to witness the real gospel. Uh, man, I've said it before. There, I don't know what the other dudes are smoking, but uh, a lot of their stuff ain't the real gospel. It's, it's, it's baloney, and, uh, you know, I... I heard a guy the other day, he's talking about Moses, and uh, uh, there was, he was talking about the attributes of God, and it means one of the attributes, one of the words means faces, he said. I didn't back check it, and he's trying to prove to me that there's Trinity. I'm like, <laughs> no, no, you come too late to t tell me there's a Trinity. There ain't no Trinity. There's no Trinity. There is no Trinity. You know, I thank God that Paul uh, baptized in Jesus' name. Acts 19, five preachers, if you've ever read your Bible before, that he wasn't a Trinitarian. I thank God that he laid the example of uh, baptizing 12 disciples in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God because it's, it's sound doctrine. It's example. It's real living proof that... If I take this stance of, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, that that is a correct uh, doctrine. And he's goofy. Uh, I'm not going to call him goofy. And the, and the uh, non-believing uh, Bible preachers that believe that baptize otherwise, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, there's nobody baptized that way. But yet they believe that is the way. See, Paul. Tells him, no, you're, you're, you're an error. If you caught Paul on a bad day, he would call you a liar. <laughs> so I thank God for, for knowing the truth of the Bible. Uh, Peter, Acts 2, 38, 8. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, except the Trinitarian preachers, in the name of Jesus Christ. See, you can go right to the scriptures. You could find the real Bible apostles. These guys around today, 
yeah, yeah, some of them are called to be apostles, but you know what? They they don't know what that means. And uh, and I always notice that their doctrines when they're teaching, um, if they don't know who God is, uh, chances are they don't know the born again message, and and that's that's uh, I found that to be true, unfortunately. Uh, it, it's I found it to be true, it, and I'm not happy about it. Um, I was going to look something up. <clears throat> I'm going a little slow today. No foodie foodie in Ronnie's belly belly. Two days. <laughs> hey, kid Jesus. You know, they, they when they suffered for the Lord's name's sake, they rejoiced in Paul, Silas. And uh, that's just one of these, uh, you know, when you fast, everything slows down. You got to rest more. You get more tired. Um, yeah, but I'm happy. I'm joyful. And I thank God. I thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, fellow, there's fellowship in the suffering when, when you do things for the Lord. Um, when he calls on you to do something. He might even call you to lay your life down one day. I'm going to say yes, Lord. Is that scary? A little bit. But more as your eyes are on the Lord. Who cares? Everybody dies. Listen to Braveheart in a movie. <laughs> Not every man really lives. <laughs> Mel Gibson, what an actor. Oh my goodness. But uh, I was going to show you something. And I forgot what it was. Oh well. That's how it is sometimes. I thank God. I, I thank God for the truth of the Bible. That I don't have to twist scripture. I don't have to twist anything. It, it is what it is. Moses declared emphatically all the prophets. They said God is one. There is no savior beside me. I'm sorry. Jeremiah, Hosea, Samuel, Zechariah, Isaiah. Isaiah 45, 5. I am the Lord. And there is none else. I am the Lord. There's none else. <laughs> imagine imagine if, if, if I was Jesus for a minute. I'm not. And I'm saying, I am the Lord. There's none else. There is no God beside me. There's no God beside me. Where? <laughs> I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. I girded you, but you don't know me. <laughs> There's none else. There's one God. Spirit, okay, you could call him Jehovah, you could call him Christ, you could call him Father, you could call him Holy Ghost, you could call him the Son of God, you could call him anything you want, but there's one Spirit of God, and he, that Spirit, was manifested in the flesh, okay, and Paul called, uh, that rock was Christ, okay, he's called the rock, He's got many names. He's called all kinds. Of Messiah, Adonai. My last video, the uh, uh, the uh, Jewish rabbi calling him uh, Adonai. Heal him. Yeshua. You know, Jesus Messiah. Jesus Messiah. The Shema. The Trinitarians, they don't, they obviously don't know or don't care to know what the Shema means. It's, you know, you wake up in the morning, you go to bed, you're saying that Shema. You're, you're touching the door with the scriptures. There's a box on your head with scriptures. And they're, Lord is one, the Lord is one. Hallelujah. Jesus, Messiah, Yeshua. <laughs> There's only one God, folks. I'm I'm glad that Isaiah or I'm glad that uh, Zechariah said it this way. Let me click on here. And that rabbi he alluded he to, he said that the the return of Jesus. He said we face to the east and say the Shema prayer every morning and night, remembering when he's going to return. Zechariah twelve ten. 
I'll start in Zechariah 12.1, then I'll go to 12.10. The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Jehovah. That's uh, Zechariah 12.1. Let's go to 10. And I will pour out upon the house of David and upon, upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. And they shall look on me whom they have pierced. <gasps> oh. See? I thought they pierced Jesus. Well, Zechariah says you pierced Jehovah. <laughs> That's why when it says me and the Father are one, duh, what's Jesus telling you? He's telling you he's the Father. <laughs> Another form. He's not the, he's not the uh, infinite spirit of the Father. That's everywhere. That's invisible. That's without form. That's not a man. He's the flesh of that spirit. Do you understand? There's only one God. Revelation 5 talks about the throne. And, and there's a book from the elders. And no one's worthy to open the book. It's hovering in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And they're saying nobody's worthy. They're saying not even Jehovah's worthy. But then it says, out of the midst of the throne stood a lamb as it had been slain from the foundations of the world. Of the world grabbed the book and opened it. For he's worthy. For he's king of kings and lord of lords. <laughs> and those that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Do you understand? So when you read 1 Timothy 3.16, it says God was manifested in the flesh. That's exactly what happened. The Spirit of Jehovah manifested as the Lamb of God, the Son in the flesh. Isaiah 9, six says this. This is the revelation. The Father, the invisible Father, became the Son. There's, there's no trinity. The devil wants you to believe there's a trinity. There is no trinity. This is the uh, Jewish Shema doctrine from Moses. All the prophets declare there's only one God. Hosea. I went, I went through the list. Zechariah. Isaiah. Jeremiah. You can go anywhere and you can find the Shema doctrine of Moses. New Testament. Jesus said in Revelation 1 8, I am the Almighty. I am the beginning. I am the ending. What's Jesus telling you? He's telling you he's that Spirit of Jehovah. Whew. Revelation 5 or 4, sat, sitting on the throne, nobody's worthy. Until he became flesh, became a man. Now, now he's worthy. Whew. Not through the name of Jehovah. Even though Jehovah gives glory, but it's through the name of Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins, Matthew 1. The angel said, call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I thank God I know that name. I thank God I'm baptized in that name, Jesus. I thank God I'm not deceived by a, a preacher that doesn't understand the, the simplicity of Christ. That God became a man. That the Father became a son. That the Spirit became flesh. The Spirit was made flesh. Made of a woman. Made under the law. Galatians 4.4. 4. Paul declares. Jehovah became a man. He told you. Paul told you. He was made of a woman here. He wasn't a son there. No, 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 no. You're outside of the Word of God, preacher, when you say, The Son was eternal. The Son, oh, the Son was eternal. No, he wasn't. <laughs> no. The nations always had triads. They're being influenced by the external nations around Israel. That's that doctrine of rebellion from Babylon, from Babel, from the tower. God was so angry after the flood few generations after the flood, they were rebelling again up to their own uh, nonsense again. 
And he, oh, he wanted to, <laughs> he's like, I won't flood him this time. I'll this person. And they took all that rebellion to the whole world. So anytime you hear a Trinitarian preacher, chances are it's not their fault. But the influence of the spirits of Babel are upon them. And they can't, they're blunt. The Bible, Paul talks about their eyes being blinded and they can't see the truth simple truths of the Bible. They can't see it. Okay? So, because they can't understand the scriptures, for whatever reason, the illumination hasn't hit them from, from the Holy God, Holy Spirit, from Jesus Christ's Spirit. Okay? So, they, they, they're blinded, and the sa Satan will hinder. Okay? So, he's blinding them. So, chances are they just, you know, are they lost? Uh, yeah. Oh, I know the Holy Ghost just told me. It's the uh, scripture in Thessalonians. You wanted me to share it with you? Was it first or second? Uh, Thessalonians 1, 8 or something like that. I don't remember. It's out of your book, dummy. Just look at your book. <laughs> second Thessalonians 1, 8. It's on the cover of my book. I don't even know that. Yet. In flaming fire taking vengeance let me read seven and to you who are troubled rest with us when the lord jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not god and that obey not the gospel of our lord jesus christ of our jehovah jesus christ most you know lord there's there's multiple lord but it all means the same thing. It's Jehovah. So when you call Jesus the Lord Jesus Christ, you're calling him Jehovah Jesus Christ. Duh. <laughs> That's what it means. Okay? Even though you, you'll click on the New Testament, Lord, it's not going to say Jehovah. It'll say like Adonai. It'll say something else. But it'll, it all means the same God. See, they try to... Because they're swayed that way, polytheistic way, they'll they'll try to twist the scriptures their way. Okay, but I thank God Paul baptized in Jesus' name. So when you see a preacher baptizing not in Jesus' name, he was influenced by the Tower of Babel's rebellion. And he's in rebellion and he doesn't know it. He's deceived. Okay? Do you understand? <clears throat> Grace unto you and peace from God our Father, even the Lord Jesus Christ. They said, no, it's not so. <laughs> oh, Lord. Help, Lord. Paul and Silvanius and Timotheus, unto the church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that too? No. Unto the church of Thessalonians, in God our Father, even the Lord Jesus Christ. The word and means even also. It means the same thing. It means even. It means one. <laughs> it doesn't mean two. It's not a plural thing. <laughs> it's a plurality of attributes, plurality of pronouns, I guess. I don't know what the English is. But it's, it's one God. It's describing one God. Okay, The Father became the Son. One more, and the video's getting lengthy. It might cut out. I apologize. Let's see. Go back to Zechariah. He says it pretty well. And I didn't even share the easiest one is Isaiah 9, 6. Zechariah 13, 6. And one shall say to him, to Jehovah, Jehovah! On his second coming, what are these wounds in thy hands, Jehovah? Then he shall answer, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. When I was flesh, when I was Christ, when I was born, they crucified me, Jehovah. That's what Zechariah just said. Zechariah 13, 6. Let's look at Isaiah real quick. My scripture. Oh, Jesus, I thank God you let me see this stuff. I'm able to...
help people understand it. For unto us 